All right, let's program by data sheet. Very uh, much the same program that we did last time, but now we're going to use assembly language using AVRSIM. All right, so let's uh, switch over, get AVRSIM set up, running. This is on Linux, but that's not a problem. Okay, I'm going to make this bigger. Any bigger? Oh. Okay. So let's uh, take a little bit of a look at what code we have here. First, we have to tell the assembler, remember we have a tool that generates this code for us. We have an assembler that says, hey, uh, this directive.cseg says whatever follows is going to be placed in program memory. There's actually an address counter that starts counting at zero uh, by default. To make sure that we start at zero, though, it's always good to add a directive, a dot origination uh, directive that says we're going to start at zero. We're not going to do any interrupts as we did before, so we don't have to do any jumping things as our first instruction. And line 13 here is, in fact, our first instruction. Take a second to go look at line 18. Line 18 is uh, SBI, which we did before using uh, DDRB. DDRB is hex 17 in our uh, data sheet. That's not our data sheet. Well, it, uh, but it's not showing up. Last video shows where we got the that. I would prefer to use a symbol instead of direct hex values, but we're going from the bottom, very bottom up. That's bit zero. Set that. It takes two cycles. If we look up here, this is LDI, load immediate, into a special purpose register. These are fast. Remember, one clock cycle. And I'm going to load the immediate value, or load the value immediately, hex one, or just one. Then out, out is the instruction. And uh, let's go to our instruction set manual. And, whoops, withouts, withouts, withouts. There it is. Store IO register to location. And remember, we have IO spaces. IO space, there's 64 of those. That address uh, out. We're going to put the contents of this register in this IO thing. So there. We can't directly write to those registers. We use out to do so. Or one way, that's one way of accessing them. The SBI, uh, it turns out, will actually directly address IO space as well, which is a cool feature of this particular uh, instruction set. Oops. So here's uh, AVR sim again. We, load, uh, we put a number into register 16. We put register 16 into IO address number 17. Both of these instructions take one cycle, so the net result is two instructions, one cycle each, or one instruction, but that one instruction takes two cycles. In terms of time, this is exactly the same. The result is exactly the same, but it does take one word fewer if we use the SBI instruction. So, and that's what we used last time, so I'm going to comment these out so we don't see them. Save that. All right. Thank you. Next one is we need to set, uh, whoop, that was that, our main program. These are labels here. We're not, uh, you'll see that we're not using the setup label and we'll get, uh, we'll get called out on that. Comment, 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 another label. This is address zero. This is the first instruction after our origination. Address one in our program memory is this SBI. We're going to set port B bit 0 to a 1, set bit. Remember hex 18 was in fact the register called port B, which is exactly what we want. So here's 0, and then R jump main. R jump main goes uh, back to here. I remember the last time we said we're just going to R jump back to ourselves. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's stick in a label. So then now we get a label at main, we get a label at again, and we need to change this. 
again, now our R jump is just going to go back to ourselves. Remember, this R jump needs to be a uh, minus 1 to jump back to ourself. It's a minus 2 if we want to go back to SBI. Let's assemble this. It assembled without errors. Here's the uh, thing. It says 24, 24, 24. It says con two warnings. One warning was no device. We didn't tell it what device it was. That's okay. Uh, the instruction is set as unclear. It says we don't know what we're compiling for or assembling for. That's okay. We didn't use any special AVR instructions that were different. We see okay. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the list file. It's just the output of our assembler. It repeats this. This is line one of my code, line five, and so on, dot org. This is commented out, remember. Our very first instruction is at address zero, and it got compiled to 9A B uh, 8. 9A B 8. Check this out. Main.rcf. 9A B 8. And that's it right there. That's what we uh, said it was going to be. And that was SPI hex 170. Our next instruction, very next instruction at address 01 is 9A C0, which is an SBI. So on. If we look back to here, 9A uh, C0. 9A C0 it got, and we did that uh, encoding apparently correctly. It's always good to cross check that. Okay. Instruction number three at address two is C F F F F or F F F. This is an R jump again. Again is ourself. We need a minus one. This is a 12-bit number. Be careful. 12-bit number. And we're going back to ourself. We scroll down. We get a list of the symbols that were used. This is a label. And that was at setup. A label at main. And then another label at again. These hex values are, are at 0, 1, and 2. Well, it turns out that we had a label at every single instruction. And there we go. All right, now Y, now M, D, I. This is uh, year 22, January 23rd. I'm recording this. That's just how uh, G, A, V, R, A, S, M, this assembler, uh, works. Program, three words of program, no constants, three words total, no RAM whatsoever. All right. What this did, this is the main.lst. It also generated a main. Uh, let's look at this main.hex. If we look at main.hex, we get three lines. Let's uh, go over and look at our raw.hex that we did. All right, if we go back to our Intel hex documentation, this is a uh, there's two bytes in here, two data bytes. Address zero. This is a record type of two. What is record type of two? Oh, look. Record type of two, extended segment address. Byte count is always two, which it was for us. The address field is typically zero. In fact, it is zero, the green right here. And then it contains a 16-bit segment base address. That number is multiplied by 16 and added to the rest of the address. So it's an offset. Our offset address offset is, in fact, 0. Then it checks some. If we don't have that, uh, it defaults to 0. I'm not exactly sure if we need it with AVR dude. If AVR dude wants it, we just say, hey, we're going to start at address 0, even though it should be apparent that that's what we want. And if you look at these two lines, we have six bytes, or three words, and they are exactly the same. So I'll go back and summarize our assembly code using uh, mnemonics for these, for these assembly words originating at the same place, assembled to exactly the same hex file, uh, the one that we did by hand.